Today on Nerd Out, Network Congestion. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano, we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're going to be talking about Cardano network congestion. That's all on your minds right now. So let's get into it. So how does network congestion happen? Well, on Cardano, it's a blockchain. There, the blocks are only 72 kilobytes in size. And they come around, on average, every 20 seconds or so. And so as you can see, the blockchain can only grow so much over time. Uh, the reason for the 70 kilobytes in size is because that block has to be sent all over the world. So that's, that's slowness is one of the things that you would expect, but then what you gain is the security of having a decentralized network. You can always be like Visa and have all your servers in one data center and get really high throughput transactions, everything, but then you're very centralized. So it's, it's kind of the price we pay for being decentralized. Um, and so when there's more people trying to add transactions onto the chain than there exists space, we have this congestion issue. So let's talk a little bit about the mempool. If you were playing with uh, any of the DeFi that has recently launched on Cardano or certain wallets, you may have seen errors that say something about the mempool is full or mempool error or something like that in your, in your wallet. So let's talk a little bit about the mempool. Every node on Cardano has a mempool. This is an area of memory that transactions sit in before they're awaiting to get onto the blockchain. And all the nodes talk to each other and they also, they pass around blocks, yes, but they also pass around transactions that are not yet in blocks. So if I create a transaction on my wallet, that will go to everybody else's nodes, including all the block producers and stake pools out there. And so hopefully when the next block gets made, my transaction will be included in that block. Um, so Daedalus is a full node wallet. It has its own node and its own mempool. Uh, light wallets, they share a mempool or multiple mempools if they have multiple servers among all their users. So as you're using a light wallet, you are in contention with some of the other users of that, of that light wallet. So uh, Daedalus still did okay last night with all the congestion, but then again, Daedalus doesn't have some of those features you need to do things like DeFi. So there's, there's trade-offs there. Uh, the default mempool size for a node is 144 kilobytes. That's two full blocks worth of data. And for a very, very long time, that was just fine. We, you know, and most nodes still, still run with this and they do okay. So most relays, uh, most block producers, it's smart to just run with 144 kilobytes of the mempool size and they will do just fine. But for those nodes that are submitting new transactions, like the backends for, for light wallets, um, this mempool is way too small. So that's, this is something that all the wallet makers are, are looking at very carefully now. A lot of them had very high mempools, but the way you all dumped stuff on the network last night was kind of unprecedented. So the ones I know about, they're running at eight megabytes or larger on their mempools, and you guys ate it all up. Uh, at least that's my interpretation of it. You know, we haven't done the full um, full analysis and root cause of, of what happened to some of those wallets. Uh, but yeah, when there's more coming in, it's, it's very hard for the wallets to keep up. So let's talk about solutions. What is the solution? For now, the solution is for light wallet providers to increase the size of their nodes mempools to very large numbers. Um, what this will do is... Um, well, let's talk about drip drops. So the drip drops mempool on Firehose during the congestion last night, it did okay. It was set to one gigabyte. Now it doesn't accept transactions from all over. So it, it doesn't really need quite as big of a mempool, but even that we hit around four megabytes in that, in that guy's mempool uh, during the congestion last night. So it was a little backed up just trying to get tokens out to people. Um, and yeah, it is, it is overkill. Um, 
and it only holds outgoing transactions. It doesn't accept any transactions from wallets or anything from the rest of the network. Otherwise, it would have blown up uh, too. Um, yeah, so and, and Firehose is not perfect either. It's I think it's pretty good, but even it, some of the some of the wallets that were using Firehose, um, we don't know whether it was a Firehose problem yet. We have to do the root cause analysis, but it might have been, might have been a Firehose problem. It may have been mempool related, but we we just don't know yet. Uh, light wallets may not need to go all the way to a gigabyte, but they still need to be able to hold more transactions than than they have currently. Uh, and once this is once these transaction sizes are increased, the mempool size is increased, your transactions will go through, you know, your wallets will accept the transactions, but you should be prepared to wait for a very, very long time for them to actually get into, uh, onto the blockchain and be confirmed. So just kind of be prepared for that. Um, yeah, the other thing is light wallets, you should also check your default time to live settings. I think even, Daedalus maybe sets 30 minutes or, or an hour. Um, and with the kind of congestion we're seeing, you should really set those time to live values for each transaction to uh, probably something in the day's range, just to make sure that things don't get dropped from the mempools because of time to live values. So is this the new normal? The new normal, yes, it is the new normal for the time being until we get some, some more scalability things going in. So upcoming stuff, we should have some smart contract script compression, uh, and then we'll also have coming smart contract pointers in the future. Uh, so for now, this is the new normal. Uh, we may talk about smart contract pointers in a future video, but to give you just a little snippet, right now, every time you do a smart contract transaction, the whole smart contract has to fit onto a transaction into the blockchain. So those smart contract transactions are very big. And we have Sunday Swap and CNFT.io and, and Token and everybody is doing smart contract stuff on the blockchain right now. And so each of those transactions is bigger than, you know, a normal send a little bit of ADA over here type of thing. Um, and then when we get a pointer, all you'll have to do is include a pointer to where on the blockchain the smart contract lives and then just include like a hash. So the transaction sizes for smart contracts should be crunched considerably. But yes, for now, this is the new normal. And with that, nerd out. <laughs>